Greetings students and welcome back to another lecture on Calculus of Variations. In this video we're going to be solving a geodesic problem on a flat surface, on a plane. But before I begin let me define the term geodesic since some of you may be unfamiliar with it. So what's a geodesic? A geodesic is just a path that minimizes the distance between two points on a surface. For example, a geodesic on a flat surface, or a plane, is the path which minimizes the distance between two points on the plane. And obviously this is just a straight line connecting those two points. Now intuitively you probably already knew that. You probably already knew that the shortest distance between two points on a plane is a straight line. But in this video we're going to mathematically show it using the techniques of variational calculus. So let's begin. We'll start by writing the problem statement. So suppose we have two points A and B on a flat plane surface. The coordinates of A and B are described by the typical Cartesian coordinate system, so A is going to be x1, y1, and B is going to be x2, y2. Our task here is to find the path y equals f of x such that the distance between A and B along that path is minimized. In other words, we like to find the geodesic between A and B on a flat surface. Now the first thing we're going to do is write down the quantity we'd like to minimize. In other words, we're going to write down the length of the path between A and B. But this is something we already know from single variable calculus. The length of the path from A to B, which I'll call L, is just the element of distance ds summed or integrated from A to B. Now from the Pythagorean theorem we already know that the distance element ds is just the square root of the sum of the squares of dx and dy. Now if we take out the dx from the square root that just means the expression becomes the square root of 1 plus y prime squared dx, which means that the distance l is just the integral from x1 to x2 of the square root of 1 plus y prime squared. Now remember y prime here is used to denote dy by dx. The purpose of this problem is to find the function y of x such that this functional L is minimized. And in order to minimize L, we need to first determine the function y of x which makes L stationary. But how do we do that? How do we make L stationary? That's right, we solved the Euler-Lagrange equation which I derived in a previous video. I put a link in the description. So let's remind ourselves of the Euler-Lagrange equation. Recall that if I had this functional i, which involved an integral from x1 to x2 of some capital F of x, y, and y prime, then the function y which makes the functional i stationary can be found by this differential equation, which is also called the Euler-Lagrange equation. So all we have to do to make this length functional stationary here is apply the Euler-Lagrange equation to our geodesic problem. In this case our capital F is just the square root of 1 plus y prime squared, so if we apply the Euler-Lagrange equation, we'll see that partial capital F, partial y is just zero because capital F doesn't contain any terms involving y. In addition, partial capital F, partial y prime is just y prime over the square root of 1 plus y squared if we use the chain rule. So the Euler-Lagrange equation here would just become the following. Now this equation is relatively simple because partial capital F, partial y turned out to be zero. In fact, ideally we want the partial of capital F with respect to y to be zero so that the Euler-Lagrange equation we're solving is more simplified. Now, since we're differentiating the left-hand side with respect to x, we can cancel out the derivative by integrating this equation with respect to x. So we can integrate both sides and the d by dx would be gone. Once we do that, then on the right-hand side we'll have a constant that I'll call c, and on the left we'll just have y prime over the square root of 1 plus y prime squared. We can get rid of the square root by squaring both sides, in which case this is what our equation becomes, y prime squared over 1 plus y prime squared equals c squared. And then we can do some further manipulation of this equation, and after doing that, we'll find that y prime is c over the square root of 1 minus c squared. But c over the square root of 1 minus c squared is just another constant that I'll call c1. Now since y prime is dy by dx, we can determine our stationary function by integrating this constant c1 with respect to x. And in that case we'll find that y is just some constant c1 times x plus some other constant c2. But this is just the equation of a straight line. 
which agrees with our intuition that the shortest distance between two points on a plane is a straight line. But we still don't exactly know the value of the constant c1 and c2. However, we can easily find them using the boundary conditions from the coordinates of points a and b. At x1 we know that y is just y1, which is point a, and at x2 we know that y is just y2, which represents point b. So let's plug that in to get two equations for c1 and c2. It's pretty easy to solve these equations using substitution or elimination to determine the unknown c1 and c2, but I'm gonna skip the algebra. I trust that you guys can go ahead, solve these equations, and ultimately show that the geodesic on a plane is given by the following expression, y equals y2 plus y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that's the slope, times x minus x2. So we've shown that a straight line is the function which makes the length functional stationary on a plane. But how do we prove that it makes the length functional minimum? How do we find the nature of the stationary function, this line? Well, typically, we use advanced techniques like the second variation, which is like the calculus of variations analog of the second derivative. Because remember, the Euler-Lagrange equation doesn't tell you whether a function is a maximum or a minimum. It just tells you that the function makes the functional stationary. However, in this situation, if you actually go back up, you can intuitively see that any variation on the straight line is actually going to make the path longer. And that's why the straight line we found here is indeed the geodesic or path of minimum distance. We might discuss the second variation in future videos just to give a more rigorous proof, but I won't actually get too rigorous at the moment. Anyway, that should do it for this lecture. I'll finish off by thanking the following patrons for donating at the $5 level or higher to my Patreon. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link to my Patreon account in the description. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.